Hello, and welcome back to this series of conversations on various security topics near and far. I'm Terry Sweeney with Black Hat, and I am joined today by Michael Howard, Head of Worldwide Security Practice at HP Inc., along with Dr. Kimberly Brannick, Senior Security Advisor, also with HP Inc. Michael and Kimberly, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's our pleasure. It is. It's our pleasure to be here. Thank you. Let's start with some context and statistics. The NSA recently estimated that a whopping 93% of security incidents could have been prevented if proper security hygiene had been observed. It's really, really shocking. We know hygiene is a challenge for, for most organizations, but if we take a deeper cut at the issue, what is this telling us about end-to-end -end security and the challenges that customers are having with it? Well, it's certainly telling us that we have a lot of gaps that we have to address quickly. The other thing that it's telling us is even though that we have great firewalls around what we're doing, that's not enough, and that the reality is most of the malware that we have is coming from the users on that are sitting in our offices every day. That's well said. So it requires a lot more education. It requires a lot more tools in place to protect users from themselves. Well, and speaking of users, we're finding that users are bringing their own devices, and they're also being rogue in the devices that they're acquiring and bringing into environments. And we're finding that a lot of organizations don't have any protocols or policies on how to manage that. These issues are going to come into sharper focus as the Internet of Things continues to emerge, and the number of networked endpoints increases exponentially. How will these dynamics impact IoT deployments and an organization's security strategy specifically? We're finding that IoT security is not even part of the equation when devices are being manufactured. It's wow. an afterthought. Okay. And we're, we're continuing to explore that. And one of the challenges that organizations, cybersecurity organizations, CISOs, CIOs, on and on, they should challenge their vendors and suppliers to demonstrate that cyber innovation and cyber resilience is being built into all devices, including IoT. It's not. The other component is challenging how those devices get used. So if a device doesn't have a job, should it be in the environment? And from my perspective, as a security practitioner, it shouldn't be. Yeah, and I think further to that, it, it's causing us to drive change in our procurement processes. In other words, we, right now we let procurement kind of drive everything is on cost and how pretty the device is. Mm -hmm. We need to change that to where it's a security buying decision. And so whether either security is involved up front or they have some decision point throughout, it should always be looked at of, is that really what we want to put on our network? What's the business needs? And can we secure it at the level that we need to? Talk a little bit, if you will, about what services have merged to address these critical needs. We're seeing that the industry, as the industry has gone along and has gotten more formalized, we're seeing a lot of best practices come to the forefront. And there's a, we're even seeing people behave differently around it, in, just in the day-to-day -day, um, social media. We're How seeing so? it. Well, a, a good example is when there's forums and blogs, they're, they're setting standards around how people behave and how they interact with technology and what they're saying and doing. And if someone behaves really badly, they're getting blocked. We didn't used to see that. It used to be the wild, wild west everywhere with, with both um, social media and with IoT devices. We're seeing that in the industry there, there's more uh, standards starting to come and, and, and have an emergence. With that, we're also seeing the industry as a whole really drive frameworks. What we've done as an organization is we've actually taken that a step further. We've looked at ISA and IC squared and we've looked at ISACA along with all of that and we've created our own framework to do security assessments. And we're finding that our clients are getting a lot of value out of that because it's raising awareness around the things that they should be doing in their environment and how huge the gaps happen to be. And it's actually surprising for our clients. HP Inc. is known for lots of great technology, including leading edge printers, network printers, um, precursors really to the, the internet of things. Talk a little bit about the special insight that this history gives HP. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and further to that, I consider printers the grandfather of IoT, right? They're the sure. first ones there. But as you know, what what we always say is you can't secure it like you did your grandfather's or your 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 father's device. You've got to think of the new technologies that we have built in and the features and functions and what those devices can do. We were very fortunate that we started with the very first network printer. So security has always been in the DNA at HP. And as a matter of fact, any product design, solutions, services that we do, the first gate that people have to jump through is the security gate. And we think that has really helped us over the years, understanding that a lot of our competitors were coming from an environment where they were copiers and they weren't on networks. We were starting out with a framework and our architecture from a network up and making sure that we had security built in. And we continue to see that that's something that has to be driven and giving visibility to our clients and our CISOs out there of everything that's touching their network is critically important and we do that in our design. As you say, it is critical to know everything that you have in the network and ensure that security is built in up front with security policies. Can, can you drill down just a bit more to talk about just why this is essential? We believe in embedding our security tools into our devices. Number one, it gives you more control. It gives you more control over the architecture and it gives you control over what you're going to be rolling out. But it also makes it easier for the customers. Right? So whenever you start looking at some of the solutions that people are bolting on, it's very complex to understand what do you need to bring into your environment, what do you bolt on, how do you get that specific application to work with a device that you may be having issues with. So I always tell people you want to go with vendors that are building in what they need on this, from a security perspective because bolt-on is just like it's going to be on anything, even an app, you know, a manufactured car and you add something new to it, it's never going to be as good as if it was the original equipment on that car. In that same vein, it's, it's clear that management in the age of IoT is no longer passive in nature. Um, talk about some of the elements of, of active management um, that make sure that your, your infrastructure stays secure. Well, again, it, it's about knowing what's in your environment, being aware. And one of the things that we find in, in a lot of our client environments when we, when we go and do assessments worldwide is they think they know their environment really, really well. What we're finding though is that there's a managed piece and an unmanaged piece. And the unmanaged piece is a lot greater than what our clients ever even estimated. And so when you are starting to, to put a strategy together to, to talk about every connected device in your environment, there should be policies, there should be standards. Uh, I see regularly that certain organizations talk about, well, there's no need for a policy. Well, what do you want your employees to accomplish? What do you want them to do? You need to give them guidance. So when you set the tone at the top and you set the right governance and the right policies and standards, and then you drive that through your whole organization, including all the devices that are in there, it just changes the way you manage your day to day. Part of it, though, is getting people to internalize security. We find that a lot of organizations look to the cybersecurity function and to uh, the CIO and the, the security function there to drive security. And really, it's everybody's job. It's, it, everyone is accountable and responsible for security. And there should be protocols put in place that help drive that so people know that, th that it means them too. Smart organizations use metrics to, to measure performance and, and improve it. What are the criteria that customers should be measuring um, to ensure continuous security improvement? Well, I think to start with, you have to start with a risk assessment and you have to make those a regular item on your, your list of what you're doing. And we've seen, for example, around printing, when we've done the, the many hundreds of risk assessments that we've done, the average score is 54% compliance, which is wow. horrible. Abysmal. Right? It's abysmal. And we thought, you know, well, maybe let's slice this down by different industries. Financial services is usually leading in it, but we're not seeing much difference in any of them. Mm -hmm. Across all the various controls, and we evaluate well over 140 controls in the assessments, not a lot of difference between uh, the industries that we see. Uh, not a lot of difference worldwide between the countries that we're seeing. We do see Europe is lagging behind a little bit, but they're coming up now with GDPR. Um, but we do see that whenever you 
pay attention to it, scores quickly go up and your baselines go up. And when you do regular reviews like you should be doing every six months, you'll see your baseline scores uh, elevated very, very quickly. And it really helps you get control and visibility to your network. As HP collects and analyzes performance data and activity patterns, talk about some of the, the trends and insights that are emerging from this data. Well, one of the trends that we're finding, I'll just use an example, asset management. Because when we talk about the, knowing what the devices happen to be in the environment, we're seeing that some organizations actually do a fairly good job of, of it. That's for the managed piece, though. So when you have an organization uh, that has hundreds of thousands of devices that are managed and then realistically, and this is no exaggeration, five times the amount of that that are unmanaged. The risk is significant. So what we're finding is that when organizations get that awareness, then they change how they manage their assets it gets them really well informed of what's in their environment, and then it causes this significant change of how they go about managing those devices moving forward. And that's not just um, IoT devices. We're finding that the value that it adds to the clients is that they're applying that to their entire environment end to end. It's changing how they're approaching everything that comes into their environment moving forward, and that's exciting.